up until now, we've been using C++ Builder and FireMonkey to build different kinds of example applications. And we've been building them for 32-bit Windows and Macintosh and for 64-bit Windows. In this video, we're going to create a C++ Builder XE3 64-bit C++11 application, both a command line application and a FireMonkey Windows 8 application. So you can see how to get started if you want to use the C++11 language. So we'll say File New, Other, C++ Builder Project, Console Application. And we'll choose C++, Multi-Threaded, and Target Framework None. This is just going to be a pure console application. And we'll say OK. Now by default, the wizard will create this starting main application for Win32. What we want is a 64-bit application so we can use the full C++11 language in the new C++ Builder 64-bit compiler. So we'll add 64-bit windows and we'll remove the 32-bit windows so we don't get a problem by using the C++11 language. And then we'll just delete all of this starting source code and we'll type in a new C++11 command line application that declares a class, has a main, we use auto to set two variable values, one integer, one floating point, and then we'll output the values of A and B, and we'll also use the size of in C++11 to get the size of the variable A inside of the class, and then we'll wait for a keyboard input to finish so we can see the output of the console app. So let's run this example, and there's the result, uh, auto integer, auto float, and the size of it is four bytes. Let's go back and use long long. We'll say B and let's uh, add another line and say the size of B inside of class A. Let's hit run and it's eight bytes using long long. So that's a quick first C++ 11 console application using the IDE and the C++ Builder XE3 64-bit compiler. And next, let's build a FireMonkey C++11 application for Windows 8. So we'll say File New, C++ Builder Metropolis UI application. And we'll start with a blank Metropolis UI application. We'll go and change the platform to 64-bit Windows and remove the 32-bit. We'll add two buttons and two list boxes. And notice they have that Windows 8 style look. And we'll add the two list boxes. And let's select the uh, the first button. Use the style lookup and make it a tile button. And the same thing for button two. In the style lookup, you can just start typing and then hit enter. And we'll change the text of the first button to be generate. And the second button, let's make it a little bigger. And the second button we'll call sort. And now we'll double click on each of the button to add event handlers. So for button one, we're going to generate some uh, random numbers. So we'll call generate numbers. We'll use the four and we'll load it up until we hit the end of the size of numbers. We'll say list box one items. We're just going to add numbers let's save everything and we need to define those two functions we can do that in the main program here or we can do that in a separate file we'll do that by adding another header file we'll go to the project manager right mouse click saying add new other under C++ builder files say header file now we have a header file where we can put some additional code uh, include vector because we're going to use a vector of numbers include uh, algorithm and include random for random number generation and then we'll create our sort numbers function and our generate numbers function so template type name void sort numbers it's going to take a vector of that type x and we'll have the variable v we'll say std sort v dot begin so at the beginning of the vector till the end We'll define the lambda, two values, a and b, and in the body we'll just say return a is less than b. And a second template function for generating our random numbers into the vector, it's going to take a vector of a type. So we'll say std, we'll use the random device in the standard library, and we'll go from 
zero to the size of the vector, and we'll just take the results, push to the back of the vector. We'll save this and we'll call it our, uh, our functions header. And if we go back to our form header file, inside of the form class, we'll create a private member for the vector of numbers. And we're gonna use integers, in this case is the type. And now that numbers variable is defined. So we finished defining the two functions we're gonna use, sort numbers and generate numbers. We've got this size here with a default value of 10,000. Over in our main program, we have to include that function's header file, which knows about those two functions that we generate. In this case, we're gonna just generate 100 numbers to start. And then we have to implement in button two to do the sorting and the output of the values. Let's call sort numbers, and we'll pass it the vector. And then for auto i numbers, for all the numbers. So we'll sort the numbers, and then for all the numbers that, w that are sorted, we'll simply go back and store those numbers in listbox2. Let's run the program. We'll generate 100 integers and sort them. And here we have a sorted list. Can it escape to close the application? So there's a, a, a quick FireMonkey C++11 Metropolis application. Now you'll notice the wizard generated some additional code. There's a, if we're on a touch screen, we can do a gesture on the form to bring up the toolbar, or we can hit the escape key to bring up the toolbar. And we can use that toolbar to close our application using the close button. And down here are the two functions that we created for the button clicks. So let's run this application on 64-bit windows. It has the Metropolis look. Let's generate the random numbers. There's 100 random numbers, and let's sort them. We'll hit escape, up comes our toolbar, click the close app, and we're back. In this video, you saw how to quickly build a C++11 console application, and also to use the wizard to create a C++ Builder 11 a FireMonkey Metropolis look and feel application. So getting started in C++11 using the new 64-bit C++ compiler in C++ Builder XE3 is very simple and easy. And we'll have more videos to come focusing on the C++11 language and its use in the compiler and the IDE.